the friends that you have right now, you might have outgrown them and they might be holding you back. And it might be, you know, they might be calling you selfish because you don't want to surround yourself with them anymore. They are the selfish ones for holding you back mm-hmm. instead of walking with you. You, have, you know, I give people every opportunity to say, we're going on a six month run. We're going to be sober for three months. Come with me because here's where we're going to be. Let's go to the gym for six months. Hit it three, four times a week. It's going to suck the first month, but here's where we're going to be and here's who we're going to become. And as you fill your schedule and you have less free time, when those people hit you up, you can say, hey, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to be at the gym from three to five. You're welcome to come join me, hit a workout with me. The people that are serious about improving their lives are going to join you and they're going to follow along. The ones that aren't are going to make an excuse for why they can't go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I will say that I have a lot of problems growing up with people that would always ditch and make excuses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do not have that problem anymore for some reason. When my friends say they're going to be somewhere at 7 o'clock, it might be 7.15. <laughs> it might be 7.05. It's always, it's always they're going to be there. We have a 15-minute beauty buffer. Okay? Yes. Yeah. So I would say I, half hour. None of my friends ever just no call, no show anymore. Those Nobody ditches. If I, you know, we take a lot of expensive trips. Everyone shows up. You know, when I was younger and me and my friends would plan to go snowboarding, we'd have half the group ditch and all of a sudden people are having to pay double. Well, we had that two or three years ago where we planned a whole snowboarding trip. We had a bunch of people that were going to go in at the last minute. Justin and I were the only two left. They were like, I thought we were going snowboarding. Yeah. And then we ended up piecing together pretty much our group after that. Yep. And uh, now... I feel safe to travel. I feel safe to go out because I know that I'm in competent company. Mm-hmm. The bar has been set. And I mean, you've noticed that lately. Yeah, I have. And um, the one thing that I take from this conversation is she said lonely. And lonely is a big part of that. And if you can't handle the lonely, I don't think you're cut out for it in general. Mm-hmm. It's all the delayed gratification. And you can start that with small things, like Justin said 30 days sober. You can start it with easy stuff, cutting sugar out of your diet, cutting small things out, delaying that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Intermittent fasting. There are so many Mm. different things that you can do to delay that satisfaction, that gratification for yourselves. I think getting comfortable with delaying that and getting comfortable with... uncomfortable. Well, getting comfortable with knowing that what you get out of that at the end is going to be so much better than what you're going to get out of it from the the beginning. For guys, the girls that are going to put out on the first date... What you're going to get out of the girl that doesn't necessarily do that is probably going to be so much better than... Well, the girl you sleep with on night one versus the girl that you sleep with three three months months later, it's more rewarding to you. I've been on both ends of that. I promise you the three-month one, she's the girl you take home. I also think that there's different levels of loneliness. I was in a relationship for three years, and then within that last year... I was with somebody, but I was lonely because I stopped going yeah. to his friend's house and hanging out with him and doing what he wanted to do because he wasn't giving that back to me. So I took that time to invest in myself. I was spending time by myself comfortably knowing that I was with somebody, but I was really growing as a The wrong people can make you feel lonely. In their, hey, let in me their tell presence. you, the worst loneliness is being in a room full of people and feeling yeah. alone. Yeah. I'd uh-huh. much rather be in a room just alone in general. Yeah. I've or been being in a, room. in a relationship and having a person sitting right. on the couch next to you and going you oh my god alone. i wish i i would give i wish i was alone right now here. <laughs> yeah. that sounds like hell and yeah i've been there before so that, that really sucks it really does but you know you might experience a little bit of loneliness but it's really just a period of growth imagine you remember back when you were four years old and your feet and your knees and your legs hurt so bad it was growing pains oh well my mom has an even better example the caterpillars that cocoon themselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They, they cocoon themselves. They're completely alone, completely isolated, and they have to 100% trust that process that what they come out of the other side of that is going to be so much better. Yeah. 